What is up everyone? It's Cody here from Yellow Jeep and the goal of the video today is to put a new rear floor into the Jeep TJ. All right, so I have decided to give you guys more detail because that's what you guys asked for in the comments. Uh, with that, I'm gonna split up the rust repair a little bit. We're gonna do the floor pans and then we're gonna do the rear floor. If you guys are interested in the Motobilt rear inner fenders, Go watch episode 10 of the Jeep TJ one ton build. That'll give you all the information you need. All right, so I've accomplished a little bit so far on this. As you guys can see, I have black Sharpie marks one, two, and three on the Motobilt inner fenders here. That is our rails for the Jeep tub or for the, the back of the uh, floor pan here. The way I did that was in the original video, I had cut the floor out. I took the old floor, put it back in and lined it up to where I cut it out. And I actually uh, just marked where the rails were. Those are important because uh, on number one here, you have both your seat bolt on each side and that's to mount the seat in. Number two has your body bolts in it. And um, number three has the seat belt, um, like the connector part. So those are extremely important. We're not adding all those into this one because we're running different seats and everything. Uh, we are gonna put the seat bolt holes in and we're going to put the rear body mounts in because if you guys have been watching, I don't have the rear most body mounts on this Jeep anymore. So these middle ones here are super important. The parts I'm using for this build are a new rear floor pan itself. And then the three channels which are the supports for the rear floor i got all this stuff off of ebay uh, if you just type in floor pan you'll find that and floor pan supports you'll find those uh, i think all this stuff together was right at about 250 bucks give or take the actual floor pan has been laid into the jeep as you can see we want to line it up on the lip of our rear cross member here and i just marked where the rails are going on this because what we're going to do is we're actually going to install the rails on this floor pan. Then we're going to install the entire floor pan into the Jeep. So we want to make sure that we have all of our measurements and everything correct. So I did these ones once again with the old floor pan and then did these ones just off of these. So that way we have a reference point on where our rails actually need to sit. And then when we go ahead and put this into the Jeep, it's just a lot easier if everything with the supports and the pan are together. So before we get to welding our supports into the floor pan and getting the floor pan into the Jeep, we need to add our seat belt bolts, which I'm just gonna weld some nuts on each side, uh, to this channel here. So I have it marked, number one, seat bolts. Number two is going to be our body bolts. So we need to get those marked and uh, welded in. And then this is also, just as a reference point, number two is where the body mount bolts bolt to the shock tower. So if we had a stock shock tower here, this is where your rear shocks would bolt to, the gas tank bolts to. These are the body mount bolts I am referencing here. And then number three is just the closest one to the trunk here. So we don't have to do anything with that one. That one's pretty much ready to weld into the floor pan itself. So. I have my old floor here, as you guys could see. And if we flip it over, we have our seat bolt holes. And then number two here, we have our body mount bolt holes. And number three is just empty. Number two also houses your seat belt. So that's the actual female end of the seat belt. So I'm gonna center these on here and then I'm gonna mark them, drill them, and then we'll put nuts in, two nuts on each side, body bolts on each side. I am not going to be worrying about the seat bolt here, and that is because we're gonna be running five point harnesses front and rear on this Jeep. All right, so as you guys can see here in this time lapse, I did, I marked my seat bolt holes. They are centered in this channel here, and then it is 32 and a half inches from center of bolt hole to center of bolt hole. And that's on both of them, 32 and a half across here.
Now, body mount bolts are three and a half inches from the edge of the rail, and then I centered them because these, these body mount holes here are bigger. That way the, the actual body mounting piece itself can move around. So three and a half inches off the edge of the rail centered, and we're gonna drill those uh, probably a little bit bigger than half of an inch. For these seat bolt holes here, I think we're gonna use 3 8 nuts, and we're just gonna drill a 3 8 hole, so that way we have the same bolt setup that the original Jeep had when we put the PRP seats in. All right, so now that we have our holes drilled, I am actually going to go with a half inch bolt. The reason why I'm doing that is one, I have an abundance of them, and two, um, you know, we're, we're going to this effort to rebuild this Jeep. Uh, let's, let's make it stronger than it was stock. That way we're not running into problems down the road. So I'm gonna put these half inch bolts in and I'm gonna spin them all the way down. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna line the nut up with the channel because we're actually gonna weld uh, these nuts into, into the channel itself. Now another consideration to make sure you don't mess up is this side of the channel is the side that's getting welded to the floor pan. Make sure your nuts are on this side of the channel. That way you, you don't weld it and then realize that it's upside down. So I measured the OEM hole on this and it's actually 7 8 so I went ahead and drilled a 7 8 hole on each side here. So what I'm doing right now is I'm cutting the square, little square pieces out of the original channel in the floor. So what you guys are looking at here is just some square box tube that I had. I cut it down so it's below our channel here. And what this does is it allows our square to move for some adjustability, but it doesn't spin. So when we go to tighten it, it will lock in place. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld these in place on the inside and the outside so they're strong. Then I'm going to cap them with uh, just a piece of flat plate. That way this little square thing here doesn't jiggle out or whatever. Um, this allows us our adjustability we're looking for here. All right, so with this thing flipped over, you guys can see that our, uh, our little body mounting bolts will move around in there. But if we put a bolt in there to tighten it, it's not going to spin. That is the big thing. So keeping it from spinning, but allowing it to move around, that way you guys have that adjustability in case you mess up. So what we're doing here is we are drilling spot welds. That way we can spot weld the support here to the actual floor pan itself. Now, how I did that was I drilled an eighth inch pilot hole and then drilled like a five sixteenths hole. Um, you know, it, you can do whatever you want. I usually recommend a little bit bigger than three eighths for spot welds, but um, there's really no right or method to the madness. I didn't measure any of this out. I just kind of started drilling approximately every four inches ish. Um, that way we get really, really strong supports in this floor pan. So um, we're gonna do that to all three, and then we're gonna start marking up the floor pan to actually install it. All three of our supports now have spot weld holes drilled in them, and they are ready to go. Now it's time to focus on the actual floor pan itself. So as you guys can see, uh, what we did earlier, we marked our rail marks with Sharpie. Now I went in, and I just transpose that to the back. And I have it numbered. So one is the front, it's their seat belt holes. Two is the body mounts, three is blank. Uh, and I'm keeping true to that on both sides so that way we're not messing anything up. Now, there's a couple things that we need to do with this floor pan. Uh, we need to drill spot welds on the sides, on the side of this bent piece of metal here. I need to trim this, this is a rough trim line, uh, just kind of where where I think it's gonna sit at. 
Uh, obviously we're gonna be probably cutting it a little bit more at some point. And then we also need to put spot welds down this because that is where it's going to tie into our subframe here. So we know we need to be within a half inch of the edge and we need to drill our spot welds on here. That way we're getting really firm contact with this floor pan. All right guys, so I got these kind of tacked in place and I checked my measurements off of these. So I know that this guy here is three and a half inches off the top. So then there's space here and space here. I measured that and I made sure that my Sharpie lines were correct, which they were in the ballpark, but they weren't exact. So three and a half inches from the edge of the pan to number three, our blank one, four and seven eighths of an inch from number three to number two. And that's measuring from here to here. And then number two to number one is 7.5 inches. So I wanted to make sure that I was exact with all this stuff. So I just double checked. And like I said, we were, we were very close, but I wanna make sure that we're exactly on spec here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and spot weld all of the spot welds, making sure that the supports are tight to the pan itself. Then we're gonna kind of reshape the edges of the pan here and we'll be ready to start setting this in to see where exactly we're at. So as you guys saw, we straightened out our edges, drilled our holes for our seat bolts. That way they're all there. Now we're ready to go back to the Jeep and get this floor pan in. So you saw me lay the floor pan in and I started by welding all of the spot welds along the back part of the tub. Then I went along the side and welded all the side stuff. Now, remember what I said in the beginning, we're going for stronger than stock. So you could just spot weld the uh, 90 degree lip of the floor pan and that would be how the factory Jeep comes. I want stronger than before. So I actually went ahead and welded the side skirts and I'm going to weld everything on it and make it as strong as I possibly can. Alright guys, outside of welding the bottom of it, which I'm going to flip it back up on its side and do once I finish all the spot welding for the rest of the rust repair, uh, We've got the floor in, it's complete. So like I said, bunch of spot welds, bunch of welds along the side. I'm gonna continue welding along the side because we're going with the theory of stronger than stock. So let's weld, it, let's weld the crap out of it, honestly. But um, yeah, there it is, finished product. Uh, Jeep floor with the Motobelt inner fenders. Like I said, if you guys want to see the Motobelt inner fender install, look at episode 10. But uh, thank you guys. If you have any questions or any more tips on what to do, hopefully this was more detailed for you guys. Uh, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Let's shoot this channel to the moon. Catch you guys on the next one.